you are the answer to it all, to it all. That is who you are. Waymaker. Waymaker, waymaker. going to read together. Shall we go? Forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. Today I'm going to be sharing with you two step forward. Let's say that all together. Have your seat. Mighty God of heaven. There we go again in the midst of your people where you inhabit. And so Lord, I call your attention to the need of your people. You've got to respond to their need right now. As your war proceeds out of my little mouth, I ask the intent of your heart be released into my heart and flow out of my mouth like a river of water. And let everyone today who come to drink, let them be filled up by the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Father. Jesus name we have declared okay two step forward two step forward what is the meaning of moving forward hallelujah what is the meaning of moving forward now before I talk about that I talk about that there's something this morning that God wants us to understand two step we need to take in life that will get us to be conqueror in every affairs of life. And that's why the, this message is tied to two step forward. Number one step forward is move on. Everybody say move on. The second step forward is move forward. Everybody say that. Move on, move forward. These two phrases uh, look like the same thing. But actually, they are different. But I'm going to tell you the meaning of moving on. To move on is to go or cause to leave somewhere. Especially because one is causing an obstruction. It is having to leave the past. Standing as a defining measure to limit the pursuit of the future goal. This is also called stuck with the past stuck with the past praise the lord what the second step forward is moving forward hallelujah everybody say moving forward what is the meaning of moving forward to move forward with something is to advance with something to make progress with something it is the ability to advance in face of friction that offers limitation to success. It is taking advantage of every little opportunity of good thing to override limitation to progress. This is also called stock in their goal. Okay, the first one is stock in the past, second one is stock in their goal. Uh, what I have found out little experience and by the grace, by the revelation of the Holy Spirit, is that 
People can't seem to move forward in life because of these two things. They cannot achieve their goal and success in life because of these two things. They get stuck in their past and they get stuck in their present. They get stuck in the pursuit of their goal. But the scripture, the voice of God, has seen this. And he has, because of this, when he was sending Joshua to stand between him and the people and lead his people, that Joshua should be courageous because the past might stand to haunt. He told Moses also, in many cases, we have the case where Moses actually slaughtered somebody before he eventually called. But for God's grace, he could have been stuck with the, uh, somebody, uh, the past that was, was, um, was after him. So God has seen that our past is not always interesting. Our past is not always interesting. That's number one. Number two, that the goal of life requires an enormous sacrifice. If a man has a goal, the goal of that man must be bigger than him. Any goal that is not bigger than me or bigger than you that we want to achieve, that is not yet a goal. So Christ understands that goal can be very difficult to achieve. And the past can be very tough to overcome, to override. And so the Lord opened his mouth and encouraged Joshua and encouraged Moses and encourage even Apostle Paul when he was preaching the gospel and he was there and the people were not listening to him. The people were actually rejecting the gospel vehemently until the Lord himself appeared to him in a dream and said, look, man, do not leave this country. Do not cast them out. Because he was telling them that, okay, your blood's on your neck. I'll have to leave here because you don't want to listen. But God asked him to go back there that it was not done completing his job in that particular environment. We've seen God in the attitude of standing to encourage people. He is being comforter and the encourager of his people. And this we have failed to realize. God is not going to give us a goal that is not achievable. God is not going to give us a task that he knows that he won't, he won't be able to supply strength to achieve it. He took his time for everyone he called, for everyone he has as a child, to go extra mile to encourage. Hallelujah. Making us know that the strength shall no man prevail. Not by power, not by might, but by my spirit, says the Lord. But unfortunately, in our generation, we have decided to take the capacity of our past challenges on ourselves. And the rebook and mockery and the shame of the past have been the driver of our goal. This ought not to be so. This ought not to be so. God does not want our past to define us. The one thing the Lord wants us to remember about the past is about the testimony he himself created. Amen. God wanted our testimony to be a driver, not a destroyer, not a retardant, not something that draws us back away from God. God has always standing to encourage us all the time. God wants us to move forward with those two steps. Moving on. Forgetting the past and let your life be redefined. Many people that are calling the scripture will discover that they are family background are not interesting. Abraham was called from idolatry, where they worship idols. Hallelujah. Whole stinking in age man with his wife. It was not a palatable story, in quotes, to talk about. But God deliberately, Graham God that controls the affairs of men, 
I define everything. I make things happen. I make things not to happen. I am the one that gives definition to things. He understand the weakness of this man. He knew that Sarah was thinking in age that Sarah won't be able to produce naturally. God understand that Abraham himself has no strength enough to be able to produce a child. On top of that, the family background is horrible. Nothing has a semblance to God's fear. Nothing has a semblance to respect for God. It's what all the worship to was idol. But yet, God deliberately called this man. Now, he did not only do that. He gave this man a place to go that he never knows. Hallelujah. He doesn't know the definition of place where he's going. He said, go to a place where I will show you. That's confusion upon confusion. So God wants the man to move forward. I was say, move forward. He did not know the definition of what the future will tell. This man also has the garbage of the past. But yet God says, move on. Hallelujah. I will say, move on. I told him, move on. So leave the past behind and take a new topic. God gave him a new topic. Not only that, God said, I'm going to show you a place. And he never knew the place. That's moving on. Despite the confusion of life. Despite not knowing how the future will be concerning your career. You took responsibility. You take your course. You sat down with it. You study. You get yourself into it. You put Jesus in the center everywhere. You don't know what the future will tell, but you get moving on. God told you, change your career, change the direction to another course. And you took another course, and you began in the journey. You don't know how the future will be. You had an intention initially, an intention of becoming an engineer. Now you clearly become a scientist because of the change of direction of your course. But God said, move on. I, I was saying, move on. You don't know what the future will tell. So is the one that is led by the Spirit. So is the one that is motivated by faith that Abraham had. And it was counted unto him as righteousness. Abraham never had given. God is looking in the generation those who can move on. Everybody say, move on again. Those who can move forward. Who will not count on their strength to achieve their goal. But they will count on the strength of God by their faith to achieve their goal. God wants a sheep that they want to shepherd. God does not want goats who will argue. Hallelujah. It's so interesting that this day we have Christians that are arguing. They argue with God in their mind. They tell God stories. The reason why they can't do that. The reason why they have to have this particular man as a husband. The reason why they have to have this particular woman as a wife. They give God a picture. The description of how their future will be. And God kept looking. Hallelujah. And God kept, kept selling to their mind. And see that they are misdirected. By, the strength, by their own strength. Praise the Lord. God is looking, looking forward to seeing us as men, as women who are able to submit totally unto him. Move forward. Everybody say, move forward. Matthew chapter 15, verse 22 to 28. Matthew 15, 22 to 28. I will tell you the story of a man here who actually moved forward. Not a man, a woman. Uh, there is this Canaanite woman. Canaanite woman, Christ was passing by. And Christ has been called to deliver his people. We are told he's been called to save his people from sin. And this woman, no quarter rider, is not, she's not qualified to receive the message of God. But then, he took it upon herself 
walk towards Jesus. It was not only that. Jesus himself discouraged her. What was the word of discouragement? And behold, the woman of Canaan came out of the same coast and cried unto him and said, Have mercy on me, O Lord, thou son of David. My daughter is grievously vexed with a devil. 23. But he answered her not a word. And his disciple came and besought him, saying, Send her away. For she cried after horse. Verse 24. But he answered and said, I am not sent but unto the lordship of the house of Israel. That's a high level of discouragement. He told the woman, it has been written of you that you are not fit to partake in this bread I brought to my people. Wow. In your house, they've given you a divination. It doesn't matter what you do. You are not going to make it. Your brothers and sisters have gone through life and you see the picture of they not making it. Even your father has struggled. Your mom has gone into toiling to be able to see you through here. And one whispering says in your ears, he said, okay, you're going to follow the path of your parent. Nothing good come from what? Come from Jerusalem. This one, this Nazareth, this woman here understand the perceptions. He understood the perceptions, but he never allowed that perception. To deter her. Guess what? See the move of this man, of this woman. What was her move? 25. Then came she and worshiped him, saying, Lord, help me. 26. But he answered and said, It is not meat to take the children's bread and to cast it onto dogs. 27. And she said, truth, Lord. Praise the Lord. Can you see what it, the woman did? The woman humbly agreed with the concept of Christ. Humbly. Without arrogance. Amen. Hallelujah. Without arrogance. But it went in another direction. It moved forward. Everybody said, move forward. Yet, the dogs eat of the crumbs which fall from their master's table. Verse 28. Then Jesus answered and said unto her, O woman, great is thy faith. Be unto thee, even as thou with. And her daughter was made whole from that very hour. God is saying, arise in your faith and move forward. There are some things ordinarily God will not give until we craving for it. Hallelujah. Until we go directly to the, to the door's mouth of God's door's mouth and knock at it. I don't wonder this generation, they have little discouragement and they run away from God. Hey, God is not moved by our ignoring his presence. He's not moved by that. God is only moved by our persistence, persistence in following him. Amen. Our persistence in following him. He made a revelation when he was with disciples. He said that this man came to his friend at night. Even the friend would not want to be disturbed. But because of the importunity of his friend, knocking at the door of his friend, he said, even though he doesn't have the heart to give, but because of the persistence, what did the Bible say? He said, the friend will open the door. And give him what he asked. Christ is indirectly telling us we've got to be persistent in our service to him. Hallelujah. He said, Blessed are those ones who do not stumble because of me. Ha. Ah. So Christ is a rock of stumbling, at the same time, a rock of life. Wow. We can, because of Christ, go to hell. <laughs> at the same time, because of Christ, make heaven. Interesting. So that's why the kingdom of God suffers violence and the men of violence takes it by force. John the Baptist was called as a forerunner of Christ to make the path of Christ straight. See what become the hand of John the Baptist. 
John the Baptist almost like deny the divine promise of God right in the presence of the people. The man who stood in the wilderness crying, shout about Christ suddenly become a doubter. So for our women, Jesus said, there's no one greater than John the Baptist. But from the days of the John the Baptist, the kingdom of God, what? So much violence. Hallelujah. He said, at least in the kingdom, he got greater than John. See, confession. It doesn't matter our stand in Christ. One thing matters. Our constantly holding on Christ. Amen. I surrender to you everything I give. Oh, holy oh, nothing. You're the nothing. I surrender, I surrender to you everything, everything I give to you. We told you nothing, we told Holy Jesus. God wants us to hold him persistently. God is not moved by our cry, our pain, our challenges. It's moved by our recognizing that he's the deliverer in the time of trouble. That's what's interesting. In. God was very furious when the people of Israel, after taking them through the journey, when it matters, when it comes to the, auto, the time they ought to lift up God, they were doubting their maker. The one who painfully took them away from the land of Egypt of oppression and brought them to the present location there. They just forgot. And they began to grumble when they were looking for food, meat to eat. They could have been giving them manna, miracles of manna. Now, these days, I don't even have a miracle of manna right now, okay? Okay, if I stay in my room, I don't do anything. I say, God, bring me food from heaven. It won't happen. Hallelujah. <laughs> but these guys, they got free, fresh food in the wilderness. Everything was supplied freely for them. Miracle of wonder. I mean, miracle. No stove, no fire. Food came from heaven. That's serious. Hallelujah. Everybody said, that's serious. Serious. You know what? They went about grumbling. So, you know, you know, uh, we've been eating this manna for a while. Why, why not now having meat? The God who saved them from the hand of the consumer. Is he not able to give them meat to eat? God said, because these people they doubted me in the wilderness. He said, none of them shall inherit my promise. All of them died. None of them. See the journey. It took God a lot. To bring these people out. But also, God doesn't mind if all of them is consumed. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine the God we are serving? He can be so kind and generous and mercy. But at the same time, he can be so decisive. He is also a consuming fire. You know those who he preserved? He preserved only 20 years old below. Caleb and Joshua, and 20 years below to get to the promised land. Hallelujah. Even Moses himself. Oh my God. Moses himself. Moses himself. When it matters, Moses was kind of doubting God, getting angry when he was to strike the rock. He speak to the rock, he struck the rock. Not only that, he called the people of God stiff necked. Anger was provoked. The people that God, by through that, God preserved him to lead, he turned his anger against them. God said, okay, okay now, I am God. That place, come over, come and see how big it is, but you're not going to get there. Wow, hallelujah. Amen. God wants us to be completely devoted to him. Two step forward. Moving on. I'm moving forward. Moving on. I'm moving forward. Isaiah chapter 43, verse 18. I'm going to read again. 43, verse 18. It says, forget the former things. Do not dwell 
on the past. Okay. I have found a little testimony about those who really achieve greatness. I mean, under the coverage of those who are no Christians, achieve greatness. One thing happens to be their driver. What is the driver? The driver has been that for every step they take each day is newness. Amen. Amen. They don't allow what they have achieved in the past to be a dictator of what the step for what they are taking. Yeah. Even Apostle Paul, I say, I forget the past. I move towards what? The mark of what? Bible reader. Of my what? What did you say? Exactly. I pray to the mark of the eye calling. Forget about the past. But it's motivated by moving forward. Some of us will achieve very simple goal and they will get excited like babies and stay there. And that's why we allow the unbeliever to call us as contented Christian people. Subservient, contented, complacent. All right? You know, it's good to be content, but the contentment that invites complacency is horrible contentment. Say, Jesus said, say, up to now, you have never asked anything. Imagine that. He said, ask till your joy is what? Full. Praise the Lord. That means your cup run over. Amen. The Lord is my shepherd. Mm -hmm. And my cup what? Cup run over. My cup runs over. Hallelujah. And Christ talks about giving to us abundantly. Amen. He gave us life abundant. Actually, put more. He said more abundantly. Hallelujah. That means that we cannot be complacent as a Christian. If a Christian is too complacent with a 3.0 and it has a potential to make a 4, it is not acceptable unto God. There are two types of sin. Sin against self, sin against God, sin against human being. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. One thing you don't want to, we don't want to do in our life is to sin against ourselves. We can achieve a great goal and we decrease ourselves in the spirit of religion and achieve the barest minima. God does not intend his children to achieve the barest minima. My friend, if our goal is to achieve the barest minima, I think there's nothing I'm doing in the United States. All right? I think so. Praise the Lord. I'm from the village, stinking village of Nigeria. Hallelujah. Stinking what? Village of Nigeria. With my short past, past, you know, when, you know, you know, when I was in school, I would take a needle and cutting wool and sew my clothes and press them very well and cut <laughs> hallelujah I will cut part of this here and bring it up and pass my clothes and the Lord will whisper to me I will take you to a place where you're going to be more comfortable I say what voice is that I say okay okay I say rise up on your bed and do what you want to do amen so I get tired. I get fed up. Polygamous family with three and a half wives. How many wives? My father. A chief. Poor like short rat. All the, all the family. But with many wives. You cannot preach what you do not have. I speak to you the power of Christ that saved me and asked me to come to America. And it provided the visa. I'm a citizen here. It made it happen. All the whispering I was hearing in my shadow came to pass right in my face. It was like a dream. When the Lord turns around, the captivity of Zion. What a damn dream. You cannot be complacent. That's not your portion. You gotta move on. Moving on is despite the challenges offered by your goal and the whispering that the Lord speaks to your ears, all the words that God spoke to your ears that you heard, and you think this is not achievable. God is saying it is achievable. 
Abraham was more than 70 before they finally gave birth. The woman too was, was very old, cannot produce child. But God said, move forward. God came to remind him again. He said, my friend, I have promised you that through you, your seed of, that come from the belly of your woman, the nation of the world will be blessed. God was emphatic in his, in his words. The world of I kept in my heart. I will not sin against you. Abraham was an example of holiness. He kept the word of God. Keep moving. Keep moving on. Keep moving what? Keep moving on. Even the brother was not helpful. Lot. Lot went the other way around. He said, I'm staying here where God wants me to stay. Sometimes today, you are in dryness. It's not because God wants you to suffer. But God must train your hand to walk. He must make you a teacher of the water camp. A generation that you have not known, you are going to be their teacher. Some of you were never born when I was hearing voices from God. Hallelujah. Amen. Even though I'm very young, hallelujah. But some few of you here are not born when I was hearing voices. God was preparing me for people I do not know. I'm not born. You are being prepared today for future. Amen. You cannot go low. It is too late to go low. It's too late. Hallelujah. You can't. 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 You want to get a boyfriend and go to bed, get a boyfriend or girlfriend and enjoy yourself? You are going to have much better enjoyment when you get married. What is the craziness about? God loves you so much and he has a plan for you. The plan I have for you is the plan of good, not of evil. God intends to give you expected end. God doesn't want to be a runner around crying and refusing to move forward with his words. We are just hearing the word, but we can't move forward with it. We think it's too much. It's a burden on us. Say, come unto me with our labor, and I'll give you what? Rest. Be out upon me my yoke. My yoke is what? Easy, and my burden is light. So how then come the burden becomes our own burden? He said, his burden is light. So we bear the burden of Christ. We take away our burden, we take his burden. Who's the owner of the burden? Hey, come on, come on, say it confidently. Who is the owner of the body? Christ. Tell me, Christ can take care of the body. He is responsible for every part of your life. You cannot move it. Oh, they don't encourage me in my gifting. But God said, I'm preserving that gifting for a, a congregation. I will not show you. Christ had to go through experiences 30 years before we were eventually released. And the people who needed him came around. Hallelujah. Amen. God did not only do that. He gave them somebody who prepared the land for him to get in. Hallelujah. God is preparing you. You've got to move on no matter what happens. Your GPA is not interesting this semester. And you get angry against God and say, Oh, I'm not going to that church anymore because my GPA is low. And you now sat down with the book. And you got more disappointment. Hallelujah. More disappointment. God has no appointment in running away from God. There's no appointment. The devil is just only going to polish the service and get somebody more depressed later. Things that we see does not give life. What gives life is what we do not see. That's the expression of the word of God. Is that the word I speak to you? How what? He said, it's spirit and what? Life. The true reality of nature, of, of the life, this is what you're seeing, is what we do not see. For what we see is temporal. What we do not see is eternal. So what the makeup of human beings it's actually the unseen. 
if you take the spirit of a man away from man, he becomes a dead body. So what makes us to be real person is what we cannot explain. What we do not see. So how come we are going to use the things we see to assess God? How can God be assessed by what he does do and what he does not do? God must be assessed by what he says. And we must wait till he accomplish what he says. Not we must decide because, because he did not do it yet. That's not what it works. Abraham never saw anything. Never saw anything. But he heard on God's word. He believed. Amen. Hallelujah. He what? He believed. He believed. The judge shall live by his faith. He believed. Believing and having faith in God is to move on in life. Move forward. No matter what happens. No friends around, nobody wants to encourage you. Move on. Those days, people are always jealous of me. If I eat rice, they say, ah, it's eating so much, big rice, good rice, big, big. They talk stories about little things I have. And I'm so poor guy. People still talk about the trouser I wear as if it's better than other people. See how God can preserve you through trials, through challenges, and still be able to cover you with the glory. Amen. That men will be jealous of. Wow. When they reject you in that group, it's because you are unique. The beauty of God can be comprehended and they cannot manage you staying there. You're too much. Your look, your posture, your body language speaks volume about the glory of God. And they say, this guy, we take him away. We can't, we can't. This guy can't be part of us. Let me tell you, those who rule the world, they are not the physical thing, people you see. There are spiritual power. Everybody say there are spiritual power. Now, from high school, people have been initiated to join courts. You want to hear it? You don't want to hear it. You better hear it now. And stand to be wise. Amen. And stand to be what? Stand to be wise. And stand move forward with Christ. Don't allow those things that you are sitting around to define you. You are a greater person. You have greater nature inside you. How can I compare myself with somebody who is in a court member? The wicked is prospering. Bible says it's for a while. Amen. It's what? For a while. The goal of where I'm going is bigger than the goal of the whole world. He is the prince of peace, the peace that no man can give. It's the first thing I receive from Christ. Wow, that's what you receive. That's the first step. And the relationship you have with the Lord to the extent that the Holy Ghost comforts you all the time. That's another thing. And then the promise of eternity. The promise that God says, I'm going to fend for you. No matter what you are going through. How many of you have had to stay hungry? Even though you are not having enough. God always makes sure his children have their need. Amen. Not only those times when I'm going through all stuff, God always makes sure that I have my need met. Hallelujah. <laughs> if we can grab the wisdom of moving forward, God told the people of Israel, he said, move forward. There's a great the sea right in front of them. And the enemy are pursuing. And they were almost looking back. Hey, What's going on? How are we going to pass? How are we going to move? God told Moses, ask my children to what? Move forward. Despite the pursuits of the past. God is in love with us. He wants us to do this two step forward in life that determines what becomes our future. Joshua chapter 14, verse 7. Joshua 14, verse 7, I mean, verse 7 to 14. Joshua 14, verse 7 to 14. Forty years old was I when Moses, the servant of the Lord, sent me from Kadesh Barnea to a spy out of the land. 
This is Caleb talking. Caleb talking. How many of you know the story of Caleb? Okay. And I brought him word again as it was in my heart. Verse 8. Nevertheless, my brethren, I went up with me, made the heart of the people melt. But I wholly followed the Lord my God. Verse 9. Now this man is kind of reminding Joshua about the encounter they went through when 12 tribes of Israel were sent to go and spy the land that the Lord promised people of Israel that they are going to possess. So Caleb and Joshua came back with testimony that we were hanging there. We moved forward despite the discouragement that was saw in the land. But the remaining tribe of Israel, what did they do? They were consumed by the terror of the giants in the land. He said, the word of God doesn't make sense. I don't think we can achieve that. But Caleb and Joshua stay in their confession. So we know for sure. That's already given to us. We are going to make it. Guess what? After this happened to them, Caleb was promised, given a promise, through the mouth of Joshua. And for the next 45 years, wow, how many years? The promises that was given to Caleb for standing persistently in his confession of the Lord's promises and not deny his faith, standing in faithfulness. These promises was not fulfilled for 45 years. Oh, some of us today, if we cry and ask God something, and God never did it, we will look for alternatives. Amen. What is it? Alternative what? Alternatives. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. But this man did not look for alternatives. He stood in the midst, kept quiet, kept moving on. When it was time, God gave him room. Everybody said, God will give me room. Rise up on your feet. Give him room. God gave him chance. Your chance is coming. Your time is coming. Where people will be ready to listen to you. And Joshua never had any other choice but to listen to him. Say, so I think since 45 years I've been staying here. And this promise was not fulfilled. And my strength still remained the same. That's what he said. The way it was strong at the age of 40, it remained as that till the age of 45. I mean, 85. Wonderful. So that means God deliberately preserved his strength. Now, everybody say, preserve my strength. Everything you think you have lost, if you can move forward today, God can preserve your strength to achieve them. People never listen to you in high school. In hope, they never listen to you. But God says, your time is coming. If you can just move forward, there will be time for people without you talking, they want to hear you talk. Rise up today and say, Lord, I want to move forward. Enough is enough. I need to move on. I need to move forward. Whatever is holding me back today, I just deliver them to you. I deliver them. Come on, open your mouth and declare. Make declaration this morning. I need to move forward. Enough is enough. An unbelieving generation defining my life and goal and being worried about what they say about me, the rejection I face in the community. Lord Jesus, I need to move on. Carry yourself. Carry yourself and speak to your destiny. Speak to yourself. I need to move on. I need to move on. I need to move on. I take a step of faith today and take the testimony from the past and reject every backwardness of the past and move forward. Whatever thing that is pursuing me from home, from family affairs that have been trying to stop me today, I pray they, their hand, hand has come to them and the hand has come to them. I decide to move forward in the name of Jesus. I decide I decide, I decide to move forward. I agree with your word. 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 
My ideas of life will not define me, but you will define me. Your world will define me. The people do not define me. You will define me. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, we have declared. Thank you, Father. Thank you for the entrance of your world that give it life and understanding. I pray the seed that is sown this morning shall remain permanent in the life of these eras. None of us today shall ever go back. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, we have declared, have your seed confidently. Testimony time. Testimony time. All right. If you have a testimony, please signify by raising your hand. Anyone? Not all at once. So, um, honestly, for this past summer and even just the first two weeks of school, a lot's been against me like a lot's just been happening and I won't even say coming against me and that's where the testimony is I was looking at everything like oh my god why is all of this happening to me why are all these changes occurring and I was looking at things negatively you know instead of looking at it like the word says to count all things joy all these things that will happen to you and then to also to know that all things work together for the good of those who love God and are called according to his purpose and, you know, coming to these events the last few nights just kind of brought my heart to a place to where I could hear from God again, to where I could stop looking at things so bleak and so dim and gray. And, you know, I started reading last night Psalms 34, and it's like the words were jumping off the page, you know, and just impacting me. You know, it was talking about, you know, just, it, it was just changing my heart and my sensitivity towards God. And it was like, you know what, God, you're my habitation. God, I want to know your name. His word says that if we know his name and we make him our habitation, we will live under the shadow of his wings and his protection and safety. And that just, it softened my heart. And it feels so good to be soft again, not to be so hard and callous against him because what life keeps bringing. So I'm just happy to be in a good place. And that's my testimony. Mm -hmm.